Hey there guys, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and welcome to my thoughts for Daredevil Season 1. Yes, I am finally talking about this show. And I know some of you have wanted to know my thoughts on the show for a long time now, especially when I would get asked what my thoughts on the show were in my live Q&As. And the reason why, you guys, is because it actually took me a while to watch this show. I didn't get around to watching Daredevil until August. I want to be completely 100% honest with you guys, it didn't really excite me. I thought it looked, you know, it looked kind of interesting, but it didn't really excite me. So it wasn't one of those shows I was in a rush to see right away. I was basically going to see it on my own time. And I did around August. So to really explain myself, it did take me a while to really finish the show. And yeah, August, I watched episodes one through four. And then September, I watched episodes five through eight. October, I put it on pause because I was busy watching all of my Halloween movies and then doing my Halloween reviews. And then November, the Thanksgiving break, I got to finish up the series by watching episodes 9 through 13. And now that I have seen Daredevil season 1, I can say that I was very surprised by the show. Like, this was a really well-made show. Charlie Cox as Matt Murdock slash Daredevil. He was really fantastic as this character. He really resembles the character of Matt Murdock and Daredevil, especially when he gets in his black suit uh, because he doesn't really go into his Daredevil red suit until episode 13. He was just really awesome and he brought his character to life. The same thing goes for the actor who played Foggy. I think the actor is Elson Henson. I really hope I didn't get that wrong but he was really great as Foggy and yeah he would be the comic relief of the group. He would add funny moments into the show but of course he's not always going to be like 100% funny. He will take things seriously when he needs to but he would add comic relief at the necessary moments and that's what I really liked about his character. I found him very likable since the beginning of this show to be honest. The actress who plays Karen who is this woman that Basically, Matt Murdock saves and brings her in into the team. I thought she did a very nice job with her character. Rosario Dawson, who I was surprised was actually in the show, she did a very nice job as the character of Claire. She is the one that would help Matt Murdock heal whenever he gets really bruised because, man, does Matt Murdock get beat up a lot in the show. Like, holy crap. Like, have a drinking game for every time the guy gets beaten up. But I really did enjoy Rosario Dawson's performance here. She did a very nice job of bringing Claire to life. And she has a little chemistry going along with Matt Murdock, which I thought was handled very well. And then there's the actor who plays that struggling journalist. I don't know what his name is, but I really liked his character. But of course, I have to talk about Vincent D'Onofrio as Wilson Fisk. Wow. Vincent D'Onofrio blew me away. Holy shit. He has to be one of the most menacing villains by far in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What really surprised me about Daredevil though is how well developed Wilson Fisk was as a character because he could have just been seen as just someone that's big and beats up people. But no, in episode 8, which is like one of my favorite episodes of the show, it really dives into his past as a childhood. How corrupt his childhood was because he dealt with an abusive father in his childhood. And just the shit that happens in there, like my goodness. So it's like... When you see him, you're like, yeah, I don't like this guy. But then you see episode eight where it really gets into his past. And then after that, you're all like, wow, no wonder this guy is 
pretty messed up. Well, really messed up for that matter because of what happened in his childhood. And when you see it, you're kind of like, I don't blame you. Like, yeah, it's wrong that he has these anger issues and he beats up people. But at the same time, you get a very full understanding of it. The cinematography in this movie, mwah, it's perfect. Really, I think the cinematography is so perfect. It feels like you're watching a 13 hour long movie really because of the cinematography and how it was shot, how it was lit. It just looked really beautiful. It does a great job of making it feel very cinematic. I think I should say that. It makes you feel you're in a cinematic world and I really like that. The action sequences are very well done. Like, especially in episode two, where it's actually in one whole take. That was actually really impressive right there. But the action sequences, and they're very violent, and yeah, they get really brutal, but it's really awesome action sequences that are honestly really fun to watch, and they have really good, interesting camera work to go with very interesting direction. I really love how grounded Daredevil was too. Like not everything is all dark and depressing, the show does add humor, but when it needs to feel really realistic, it feels very grounded in this world and because of that it does make the people in the show feel so real and relatable in a way. So Daredevil executed that very nicely. The score in the show is really beautiful too. I would really like how it would flow through some of the scenes throughout the show. And the last good thing I do have to say about Daredevil is that each of the episodes in this show have terrific direction with amazing camera work into them. It was honestly really impressive on how the episodes would be directed. I really like it when someone could just take a camera and just get creative with it as much as they can. And I think the show, you know, for whoever directed each of the episodes, they really went creative with the camera work. Sometimes even in like one whole take. Now, I do have a few issues with the show. Episodes one through four were definitely my biggest issue with the show. I could not get into this show for the first four episodes. Now, episodes one, three, and four, I'll say they're decent episodes because at least there are certain elements in those episodes that had me going, hmm, okay, that was good. I think episode two is by far the worst episode of the season. It felt like a chore actually watching through episode two because at least episodes one, three, and four, even though I would be kind of bored watching them, there would be certain things that would hold my attention. But when it comes to episode two, I almost wanted to fall asleep. So the big downfall of season one are the first four episodes in my opinion. The next thing is that this show is very predictable. Now, there's only a couple of things I didn't see coming, and I'd be like, wow, that was surprising. But really, I say, what, 90% of the time, I can see what's going to happen. And the last issue I did have with season one is that the show would feel repetitive, like Matt Murdock. He goes out to beat up some bad guys, you know, save the night, but then he'll get beaten up and then he would have to heal. Then he'll have to go out there. He gets beaten up again and he has to heal. Then he goes out there, gets beaten up again. Like you guys get the point. It felt rinse and repeat. There's nothing wrong with the hero getting beaten up because you want to feel bad for them. You want to root for them. But after a while, it's all like, okay, that happened again. Okay, that happened again. Overall though, guys, I do think Daredevil Season 1 is a really solid show. It's really awesome to watch. It was a surprise to me because I did go into this at least kind of interested, but not really in a rush to see it right away. So I'm going to give Daredevil Season 1 a 7.5 out of 10. 
So you guys, those are my thoughts on Daredevil Season 1. Comment down below and let me know what did you think of Daredevil Season 1. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!